Hey guys, Spence here and It's okay folks. I'm the police. Commence being calm. Well, I can't believe you hit those robots with your ship. Oh, no problem. I do that kind of thing all the time. Save people or crash into things. Both? This is gonna be fun. So, Assault Android Cactus. This game was made and released by Witchbeam, and you could also say it was released by Steam, because it came out during the inception of Early Access. So yeah, Assault Android Cactus is a couple years old. Now while the game definitely wasn't complete when it was released in Early Access, because it's Early Access, what do you expect? It has won a number of awards and has been patched regularly throughout its development. But we are not talking about the past, because the game is fully released and ready to go. So, what's going on in Assault Android Cactus? In the far off distant future, androids are commonplace, namely the Assault variant due to their sheer versatility. But on a large spacecraft in the middle of obviously space, the robots on board go rogue and basically take over the ship. Because of this, the Galactic Police send out an android officer named Cactus. And now it's up to Cactus and the other androids on board to basically stop the robot rebellion and figure out what caused it in the first place. And that is it plot wise. Outside of the intro cutscene and the dialogue before and after boss fights, there really isn't much else said. Now when you go into the codex mode though, it really hints at a big wider world because it doesn't just have descriptions of enemies and the backgrounds of the different androids. It talks about various things like the difference between an android and a robot, current state of Earth and Mars, and how there's a bunch of mining stuff going on in Jupiter. Seriously, there's a lot of things in here to actually read up on, and it hints at this wider world that you don't have access to because the game's scope is really just a ship and it makes me wonder why it's even in the game. Because it really just bothers me how irrelevant the information is. Maybe they'll have a sequel. Gameplay wise, we got a twin stick shooter. When it comes to the controls, you can use the controller or the keyboard and mouse, and both controls work fine from my experience, though I prefer the controller. Outside of moving around and controlling where you face, you can shoot your weapon and swap to your secondary weapon, which is more powerful, but needs to cool down after a while. The main mechanic of Assault Android Cactus is the fact that all the androids are battery powered, so you keep defeating enemies and they'll occasionally drop batteries that you'll have to pick up so you can keep going. This applies for all stages and boss fights. This is also the only way that you can lose. You could be defeated multiple times over and over again. It just affects your score. But if you run out of battery power, then you have to start the level over again. There are three power-ups that you can find during levels. One that increases your firepower, another one that increases your movement speed, and the last one that immobilizes all enemies and makes you invincible for a short period of time. Now your main goal in Assault Android Cactus is to defeat the incoming waves of enemies and eventually you'll defeat the last of them and thus complete the level. This can be seen as a negative because it's the only thing you really do in Assault Android Cactus. That being said, while Assault Android Cactus only does one thing, it does this thing very well for a number of reasons. Reason 1, the different androids. While you cannot swap out the different weapons that androids have, so hypothetically, no, you cannot give Cactus a shotgun, each android has two unique weapons to them. And there are 9 androids in total, so you have 18 different weapons to mess around with. Also, every android is fun to use, though admittedly some are harder to use than others, but still, it is a fun experience swapping around between the different androids. And chances are you'll run across your favorite gameplay-wise eventually. Reason 2, they introduce new enemy types in a healthy pace. Admittedly, in the beginning, the enemy variety is really light, but later on you'll be dealing with a lot of different enemy types and trying to prioritize which ones are the most dangerous. Reason 3, the levels are actually surprisingly varied. Depending on how the level is laid out, enemies will approach you from different angles, and sometimes there will be different mechanics going on. Plenty of levels will have holes in them that enemies will crawl out from, so you know not to stand too close to those. One of the levels you are on a high speed transport, and depending on if it was going really fast or really slow or turning, it would affect how you would end up moving. Now, some levels have real terraforming aspects to them as you progress in them. The levels are really varied, though the more extreme ones I do admit I love and hate them at the same time. Reason number four, leaderboards! Okay, not really, but they are there if you're into that sort of thing. And if you're not, you can turn them off in the options. Thanks, Witchbeam. Now, actual reason number four, four-player multiplayer, though it's all local, unfortunately. Though if you can't have friends together, you can unlock an option to have AI companions with you, though that's... Hmm. And reason number five, the game is just really fun to play. Racking up high hit changes is satisfying, getting high grades is satisfying, doing good with androids you originally didn't do good with before when you first got them is satisfying. It is a really fun game to play. Having played the game when it first came out in early access and on and off as it got patched, it's really hard for me to measure the actual length that the game will have for you since all the stages and androids are already unlocked for me. 
There are about 25 levels, and each one goes on for about 5 minutes, give or take. It's definitely not the longest game, but the length will really depend on how much of a hard time you'll have with certain levels or bosses. But if you see it through to the end, the game won't overstay its welcome. The last thing to know gameplay-wise is as you play the game, you get credits, and those can be spent in the EX options menu. Here you get options that augment the game in various ways, like one will put you in a first-person view so you can see everything from the Android's perspective, though that causes my frame rate to tank, and let's be honest, the game was not designed with that in mind. Another one will give you that extra AI option that I mentioned earlier, and some are just filters and some affect the way the music plays. There are a few caveats, though. A few of these will affect the game in a way that they won't record your score or upload it to leaderboards because, well, if you have AI partners, that's kind of unfair and shouldn't really count. And some of these effects are kind of pricey if you don't do exceptionally well in a lot of your runs, like going without getting hit once or having massive chains going off for a few hundred different hits. So that can result in a good amount of grinding. So like I said, it's a one-trick pony when it comes to gameplay, but it's very good gameplay. Presentation-wise, the game runs really well as it can go over 60 frames and they definitely take advantage of the sci-fi aesthetic. Enemies are uniquely designed and the androids, while they definitely look like they all came from the same template, they all look different at the same time, which definitely works with the idea that while their personalities are different, they all were made at one point from the same mold. I won't lie, I had an uncanny valley feeling about the androids when I first saw them with the natural faces on the mechanical bodies, but I got over it after a while. On the sound front, the sound effects were handled very well, definitely adding to the effect of satisfaction when you blow away enemies, especially with the shotgun weapon. When it comes to the soundtrack, the soundtrack is actually pretty good. There's a lot of tracks are catchy and upbeat, and definitely adding to the hectic gameplay that's going on on screen. So in general, the presentation is a large success in my opinion. And that's Assault Android Cactus. Would I recommend this game? Yes. It is a very good twin stick shooter, so if you're into twin stick shooters or bullet hell style games, this is definitely something up your alley. That being said, the game does have an issue with repetition, and there is no online capability whatsoever. So no online Android shenanigans unless you're wreaking havoc on the leaderboards. In short, a game that knows what it is and does what it does very well, and while it only really does one thing, it does it very well. Hello again, thanks for watching. If you happen to like this sort of content, drop a like, comment, subscribe, and maybe tell a friend who'd also be interested in this sort of content. If by chance you want to see some more of my stuff, I recommend you click on the annotation to the left that will take you to my Shantae and the Pirates Curse video, because that was a kind of slow week that week outside of the Phantom Pain. On the other hand, you want to see something else on the opposite end of the quality spectrum, I recommend you click on the right annotation that will take you to my Battle Tanks video. It's for the Game Boy Color version and it's not a great game.